I'm done with these goam shows. Oh, where do you think you're going? You're supposed to be doing the British Swiss Goam Show with you. You're contract. Shut the oh, fuck! Oh. Oh. Well, guys, it looks like Terminator Engine has given up on go-home shows, and I can't really blame him for doing that. So instead of Terminator Engine for this go-home show, I have no other than NJ by my side. Wake up. <sighs> Wake up, NJ. We're the British Fist. Catch Mr. Parkin here, as you know, and just because I want him to do the what's up, here is NJ, people. What's up? A very excited what's up. Woke you up very well there. Subscribe above, like this video, comment your thoughts on this Smackdown down in the comment section below. And if you watch this Smackdown, please make sure you contact us in the link in the description box below. Do you think this review might be a quick one? I am thinking so. We got through Smackdown very quickly this week, didn't we? Pretty much so. Yeah. Um, we opened the show with Autumn. This is the go-home show, by the way. It's supposed to get us really excited for Hell in a Cell. We open up with Autumn, uh, looking ever so more baby-faced with his hair, and uh, comes out talking on the mic, saying it's not because Del Rio attacked him, it's why he attacked him and you have Del Rio coming out in a typical heel fashion, Orton calling his lines and Del Rio not wanting to get to the challenge. And I guess my question is, why does every damn heel in WWE have to be a cookie cutter cowardly heel? Even Big Show in the segment in the main event was a cookie cutter cowardly heel. Why does every heel have to be fucking cookie cutter cowardly? Why can't one of them just be strong and put up a fight? They why? should be. Like, there's one that's going to come later or not just announced, I think could be one of the heels that's not a cowardly heel, but we'll get to him in a minute. But this opener, Orson open it, hyping up SmackDown's one of their main events, apart mm. from Big Show and Sheamus. Okay, this does get better as the night goes on, but for an opener, it hyped up and gave us the rest of the night. Yeah, I mean, you've got two very bland, one-dimensional guys on the mic, which doesn't really make for great promo segments, but it was all right. It hyped up their match. And then you had Barrett coming out, attacking Orton from behind with, what, one shot, rather than beating him down. Just hits him with one shot. Shows how much they want to protect Orton. Um, and then we have our, our main event for the evening, which, which we found out later, was Barrett versus Orton. This match, I think it's pretty strongly done. I do expect matches that Barrett against main eventers to be probably saved for the pay-per-views and stuff because Barrett can't be facing local wrestlers jobs and stuff he does need feuds with wrestlers like Orton again or just someone else but for a match the way it's set up yes all in a feud with Del Rio but it's a good match for the go home show, I guess. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's set up the Dorio Orton feud uh, for Henry LaSalle, um, and it made um, our main event. And uh, you could tell in this promo segment that, that Orton really, really doesn't like being a babyface on the mic. You can just tell by the way he's talking and expressing himself. For a long time now, Orton has been played as a really strong heel, the legend killer, the feud with Triple H, the thing with Edge. He's been a really strong heel, and the fact that he's become a face just so he's smacked down can have a top face, now they've got Sheamus. It's not working. It's not what fans want to see, I'm pretty sure, even if you are an Orton mm. fan. And I think Orton's at a time in a place where he thinks, you've had me face long enough. Let me do something that's going to make me heal again, which would, I hope, bro kick someone like Dario. To be honest, I say this as a question out to you guys. Um, when do you think Orton will... Stuff. When do you think Orton... It doesn't really matter. When do you think Orton will turn heel if you do think he'll turn heel? Let, let us know in the comment section below. And after the opener... Yeah, Cody Rhodes versus Kane with Damian Sandow and uh, the colour commentator for the evening with Daniel Bryan. Uh, Sandow could definitely be a colour commentator for WWE, much like CM Punk, couldn't he? Daniel Bryan's boring a mic. Damian Sandow, I do agree that he's pretty strong. Done, like we said, I we both pointed out he's a bit like CM Punk, a great mic talker, a great person that could be on commentator for matches coming up like this one. The match itself, yes, you would expect the probably the road cars to look strong but Kane got the win making the tag champs look strong over the road cars who attacked them pre I think it's on Raw last week. Mm -hmm. So it's I think this match is set up a good way because also it also depends later on, which is a little spoiler, that it's gonna be the opposite yeah. uh hell no member that's gonna screw them up at the pay per view. Yeah so it's just standard tag team hype I mean it's already had all the hype it's needs so this was the pretty much the standard segment needed. Um after this you had Miz versus Yoshi Tatsu in a squash match. Um 
After Miz lost the IC title and has really not been looking very strong with defeats to Ryback and people like that, I think, to be honest with you, Miz did need this squash match just to make sure they could try and get a little bit of heat back and to make him look strong in some way. Even though it did take him a, a, a bit of a long time to actually get through Yoshitatsu. Now we'll move on then. Why did they have main event footage on SmackDown, NJ? I guess they're really trying, just so it's not a show that's behind the scenes, they're trying to get it advertised on like Raw, on SmackDown. So I think this was just to get it out there, they're just a behind the scenes show. So I guess it's SmackDown promoting it. Yeah, and we had a Divas match announced as well. Eve versus Caitlyn versus Layla for Hen in a Cell. Go tune into our preview video, which will be up on Saturday, where all our thoughts on the matches on Hen in a Cell will be. It's a very interesting video, we've already recorded it. Uh, for our main event, Wade Barrett versus Randy Orton, uh, I guess, it harks back to the days when these two kind of had a feud and they kept having match after match after match on free TV and it's like, well, we're getting it again, okay. I think even though we've seen this match before, Barrett's tried to reinvent himself with yeah. the WWE have. He's now going against Orton. Pretty strong match. I thought it was pretty good for what it was. They both had their time against each other and Barrett against Orton... Is a few that they could relive and try and do it properly, or just put Barrett against SmackDown's top guys. I thought this was an okay match. Yeah, and uh, the booking here was actually pretty good. I mean, when was the last time we saw this booking? You know, the most simplest booking in the book. Wow, you have Del Rio come out, distract the babyface to allow the heel to get the victory, getting more heat on the heels, and then meaning that the babyface going over at the pay per view may mean a little bit more. Such a simple way of doing it, which they've never seemed to do with guys like Sheamus and Cena because they want to protect them too damn much. That's the thing, because with Sheamus, they've had many opportunities. Yes, they briefly did, like Big Show threw Sheamus out of the ring. But I think they could have done it more with Sheamus, like had Big Show actually knock him out, but they didn't. So to see Orton actually go ahead and allow... Del Rio to screw him in this match. I thought it was a nice spot for SmackDown. Yeah, then you have Del Rio attacking Orton after the match. Del Rio escapes and Orton ends the segment on top. So it's like Orton was like, well, I'll do a job here, but I'm going to end this segment on top, brother. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, the Breakfast Club reunites. Uh, Eva Nexana versus Layla and Caitlyn. A typical team Divas tag match. I wasn't really too bothered about this. Layla gets the kick, goes to kick Caitlyn, but Eve moves and... She kicks Caitlyn by accident and uh, Eve gets the victory. So I guess that kind of teased the whole triple because they had triple threat elements in there with all three of them being involved with that. And it showed that Eve could get the pinfall on anyone. So, I mean, it was a Divas match I didn't care about, but the booking was was pretty good, I thought, for this one. we we'll move on then. Re Raw rebound. Uh, we don't really enjoy the Raw rebounds, but there was one piece of this. Cena is going to address the AJ situation on the pre-show. We will not be watching the pre-show. So there we go. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Damian Sandow. Only this time we had Rhodes and Kane on commentary hyping up the tag team title match at the pay-per-view. The second segment uh, on the show that did this, the match itself, you had Rhodes attacking Daniel Bryan on the outside and allowing Damian Sandow to get the win. I'm very glad they allowed Damian Sandow to get the win and I'm really looking forward to this tag team title match at the pay-per-view. Well, this goes back to what I said earlier. They're continuing the Raw last week thing when they said that you're the one who's going to screw up the match. So have Kane win his match, Daniel Bryan loses his last match for the pay-per-view. It's teasing that a little bit and this view this match I think it's definitely going to be a strong one for the pay-per-view if done correctly yeah and any Sandow mic time is good mic time I will really? say that um, especially when he's going on about how p different people say yes and stuff that was priceless but there we go in the main event of the evening we had Big Show versus Sheamus facing off in the ring um Security separating both the guys out and they both basically talk on the mic about how lethal their finishing maneuver is and how they won't hit it at the pay-per-view Big Show sites. The fact that Sheamus can't get his legs up high enough and uh, Sheamus sites that Big Show's Big Show has to actually hit his uh, hit his punch. And um, I thought this was pretty pretty decent between these two. I mean, this is the sort of most lethal we've seen Sheamus on the mic because they've kind of blanded him down so much recently because of the PG rating. But Sheamus says there is no bigger challenge than Big Show, even though he's kind of been joking about it for weeks. It's kind of like, well, way to go back on your word, Sheamus. The thing is, Sheamus is trying to make Big Show look like a threat going to the pay-per-view. He's when, not. To be honest, the WWE haven't booked Big Show in a strong, dominant way. Not not even that thing he did with Lauren Ice and Cena. That didn't really work. So Big Show doesn't look like a threat going to Henderson, Cell, even if Sheamus tried to put him over. This segment, we all knew what was coming. Just like they did with that Orton thing when Del Rio could not... Get Orton down, Orton had to come out on top. Here, Big Show obviously escapes and Sheamus 
knocked down a security guard. Yeah, I mean, you had them both taking out security guards pretty much, like bam, 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 and then you have, they finally, this is the thing, they finally, after all this time, brawled or something, because one thing I think this feud really lacked from the last couple of weeks is there was too much talking, and they hadn't touched each other a hell of a lot. I just wanted a bit of a brawl, just so we could really start feeling this feud, and they've done it on the go-home show, finally. Um, basically, you have the brawl with security, then you have Sheamus going to hit Big Show, and Big Show rolls out the ring. And this is what I mean about the whole cowardly heel thing. They can't even book Big Show, who's seven foot, 500 pounds, 450 pounds strong against Sheamus. And if you can't book Big Show strong against Sheamus, then who the fuck can you book strong against Sheamus? I mean, seriously, this rolls out the ring. Are you joking me? When has when, when Big Show ever rolled out the freaking ring as a heel? This is getting horrible. They're like, protect, like we said earlier, protecting Austin, protecting Sheamus, when it should be, as we said in the past, the heel is looking strong, ready for the pay-per-view. Big Show's one that should be a dominant monster against Sheamus, but they've not booked that. Slash Chance didn't really get me hyped up for their match at the pay-per-view. And Sheamus ended up looking at Bisha saying, come on, come on. And then Sheamus is left in the ring. Yep, so that ended the show pretty much. Uh, let us know what you thought on this edition of SmackDown. I, I We skipped a lot of SmackDown, essentially. We generally skip a lot of SmackDown every week. So there was a couple of eh, segments in there. But they did a decent job hyping up some of the matches on the pay-per-view. So I won't say it was a terrible show, but it just wasn't a show that... I just encaptivated me like I feel SmackDown should before a pay-per-view. Even though it's done in Raw, I think Ziggler could have been here. Because he is SmackDown's moment the bank. <laughs> he doesn't have a match on the pay-per-view, though. No, but neither does Barrett. But he got a big match against Orton. At least he helped further along a storyline, though, yes. Barrett. So. But other than that, the only thing I really liked was the, the, the tag team hype and Barrett and Orton. Okay, well, leave your thoughts down on SmackDown in the comments section below. Make sure you tune in for our preview video of Endless Cell on the Saturday night, of course. So that has been it from me, Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me, NJ, is now going to provide you an outro for this SmackDown review. Thank you very much, people. And if you watch SmackDown or was awake for SmackDown, please share your comments in the comments section below. And until next time, enjoy the pay-per-view, enjoy our predictions, and goodbye.